UK boxing blogger coming right back at you. Weekly boxing talk with special guest Gary Shogun Logan and Box Nation um, pundit. How are we today, Gary? You right? Yeah, really good, thanks, mate. Really good. No problem. Right, we're in the middle of the um, the legendary Bernard Hopkins fight week, mm -hmm. taking on Kovalev. First of all, what do you think of that fight and Bernard taking it at this stage of his career? Amazing, isn't it? Amazing that he going to fight somebody that is um, not as a te not nowhere near as technically adept as him, but if the guy does catch him on the chin, then he's, we're going to really ask questions about whether Bernard can take those sort of shots, you know, I mean, if he does take one of those fully on the chin, wow, we it would be amazing, but um, it's going to be a tough fight, um, I still think technically it's just Bernard knows so much, you know, he... You know the 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 the, uh, the 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 maxim or the the saying, you know, boxing master is often too easily used, but this guy really is. You only have got to watch on his, his YouTube instructor videos and just to realise how in depth and how much this man lives his life. He is a martial artist, which is what a boxer should be. That's what I truly believe. And when you're a martial artist, you have to study and try to be good at every facet of your game you know it has to be a complete thought process that's why back in the day proper fighters always went away to camp because well, that's where you get your head down and you concentrate on becoming a better fighter and this, this all this guy has done is become technically better over the period of his career he's now arguably better now than he was than he was before he beat Trinidad, which was his coming out fight. Well, see, yeah, he's somehow negating youth, strength, and, yeah. and stamina, and all the attributes associated with a guy half his age yeah. in the prime of their lives yeah. by just his his boxing ability and his, and his boxing skill. Yeah, you well, know? his fundamentals are just way better than anybody that he's boxed, with the exception of Chad Dawson. Chad Dawson had all the fundamentals to not be a good fighter, but a great fighter. But the problem with the difference of Chad Dawson and Bernard Hopkins is that Chad Dawson never really wanted to be a great fighter. And that was exemplified in his performances, how his head could easily drop. Whereas Bernard wasn't as talented as Chad, wasn't as talented as Roy Jones Jr., wasn't as talented as even Felix, Felix Trinidad, but he's willing to make himself fundamentally a better boxer and that's the whole different ball game you watch where he's right and he's positioned he's always protecting the side of his jaw his left shoulder always faces his opponent see this is my argument right i think personally myself right you've got three outstanding boxers of this era mm -hmm. right you've got floyd mayweather yeah. you've got manny pacquiao and you've got bernard hopkins mm -hmm. you know i is Bernard Hopkins, with all he's achieved, the best fighter of this era? Especially, I believe, if he if he beats Kovalev this mm -hmm. week and unifies the light heavyweight yeah. division at his age, yeah. with all his middleweight history and yeah. all his outstanding achievements, he's the man who beat the man. Strong argument. Very, yeah. very strong argument. And the reason why I would go with that, because he's fighting a young hard punching light everywhere that virtually everybody else is scared well, of. Well, yeah, everybody is scared right? of it. That's... He's, everyone is scared of. That's why Adonis Stevens is fine with Al Heyman and, and um, Bernard has stepped up and he's fighting him. Now, I know for a fact Floyd didn't fight the most dangerous fighters of his day. He's fought them when it's been appropriate for him to fight them. Right, yeah. yeah? And that's my argument. You know, the fight, you know, Ray Leonard was the best of his day because over a three-year period, from 80 to, no, over a two-year period, from 80 to 82, he fought the world's best welterweights. Well, this is the thing. In their primes. Yeah, of course. This is the thing with Bernard Hopkins. He's the man who beat Kelly Pavlik when everybody was scared of Pavlik. He was the man who beat Tarver when he beat the man, Roy Jones. That's right. Yeah. And all he does is negate styles with his boxing mastery. And, you know, and that's what he does. He, and he, that, that is what is so amazing about him and his team. You know, Nassim Richardson is a great trainer. I love listening to his corner work. Um, I'm a big, big fan of his. Um doesn't say too much, only says what's necessary and bloody hell, what he doesn't say, Bernard already knows. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it's, it's, just, it's just great to watch this man work. I mean, I was, you know, for me, 
watching the other night watching him um, doing his media workout on the pads with Nassim Richards. It was like it was like porn. It was like boxing porn. It for me, it was, it was good as watching James Tony when he sparred with Joe McClellan on YouTube. It was, it was just wow. up there. And um, the man does. You know, I say to everyone that starts boxing, if you want to learn the fundamentals, how you stand, how you position your hands, watch Ben Hopkins. Up. See, right, there's one, I've got one question for you, Gary, right? Mm -hmm. For me, and this is a big fan question as well, right? So for me, uh, I put this fight against uh, Bernard Hopkins taking on Kovalev right up there with as, as a dangerous fight, right up there in sort of levels of, I know maybe not at the level of, but how dangerous it is for a certain fighter. Floyd Mayweather fighting Pacquiao in his prime, how dangerous that would have been for Floyd. Yeah. Right, I would have, I would put this up there right now. Yeah. With anybody like um, Cotto or even Floyd or anybody fighting Triple G right now, or any, yeah. it's like that's dangerous. You know, you could yeah. get seriously hurt. You know, they're the kind of fights you go in scared. Like, just think when Ben would fought McLennan, just how scared you would have been. Yeah, I mean, the amazing thing about this fight is that. But why is it not getting any coverage, though, Gary? That's why the thing. Why not? I know Bernard Hopkins come out with saying, because this is another. This is a big point this week he come out with a statement that maybe he's a black fighter mm. and he's not getting the recognition he deserves mm. but i don't think that can be true no. right i think do you think he's done that for a reason to maybe bring the like maybe to bring some media attention to yeah, make maybe. the fight be? or is it the fact that oh god as much as I'd, i hate to say it he boring when, when burning boxes it's not an event no for some reason, he just hasn't got event status. He's always needed a name to make it a kind of event, like when he fought Felix Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And this is his biggest fight, really, on paper. This is a fight that maybe the man in the street, if you heard about it, fight, a 50-year-old, a 50-year-old fighting a younger, dangerous Ivan Drago-type Russian guy would have interest in it. But generally, he's... He, even though he's boxing royalty with his, with, for the reason that he's had such a long and amazing career, it's never been an amazing career full of standout knockouts against um, name against name opponents. He boxed Oscar De La Hoya at the end of his career. So you're saying that, really, as I've said, we, go, we always go, we have to go back to Trinidad and then after Trinidad public. Of course, yeah. You know, but that's see... in it, so... Yeah, see, the thing is, I think when he was about to, ca like, cash in on pay-per-view status, status mm. and that, was after the Oscar win, and he went and lost to Jermaine Taylor, like, pretty yeah. soon after. Yeah, I think twice. Yeah, twice. twice. Then he lost to Joe Kazaki, but they were great fights, you Of course, know? I think, like, but when you become a pay-per-view star, I think it's all about timing. Yeah. Yeah, to, for, to get you to that level, and I think his opportunity, as great as he is, I actually believe he's the greatest of this era. That's my opinion. And win, lose, and you know and what? I win, lose, or draw at the weekend. If, you know what? If if I, if with what I teach and what I believe should be taught, and what he does, I'm inclined to agree with you. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's not about the flash and the brash and the multi and the multi six punch combinations. It's not about that. It's not about the Mayweather pads. It's just not about that. It's about blocking. Negate is about blocking and punching off somebody else's shots, stepping off at angles, mm -hmm. um, just commanding the ring just with your presence, lots of feints, lateral movement, and this guy does it all. It's like a martial art, you know, it like really negating leverage yeah, and timing. Me, boxing is a martial art, and this guy has perfected it. He knows how to be offensive. You know, and at the same time, he's a prize fighter because if things are getting difficult, he'll stick the nut on you or he'll hit you low. Of course, yeah. You know, yeah he he yeah. is a prize fighter. And that's what olden days prize fighters were. Yeah, and he's a prize he's fighter. Tom Molyneux back in the Victorian times. Mate, if they were winning it fairly, they'd stick that thumb in your eye as soon as look at you. Mm, yeah. And, you know and, I mean? and he'll so, fight anyone. Yeah. And, you know, to me, he epitomises it. And what, what he epitomises to me is the, just the damn obdurate outright discipline that is taken for him to still be looking 10 years younger than what he is now right so we we wrap the bernard hopkins thing up with a prediction yeah right so i'll go first i i predict bernard hopkins to win over 12 rounds 
The only way I see him losing is if he becomes really old in front of a really dangerous guy that yeah. he's not the type of guy you want to be going up to be turning yeah. old against yeah exactly yeah how do you see it i see the same thing he hasn't stopped anyone in 10 years bernard but i mean he's still such a magical fighter he hasn't needed to so i'm going with a point victory as well um there might be a couple of stumbles along the way mm -hmm. um, i don't really envision it i'm just trying to give kovalev some sort of chance I just don't think, you know, when he stands up and tries to box with this man, he's got to try and bludgeon this man. And if he if he's, if he's successful bludgeoning him early, then there's an opportunity to, to, to be victorious. But if, he, if, 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 if he's not made any headway in the first three rounds, and I mean no headway, then um, Bernard's going to do what he does with other guys. He's just going to mesmerise him. Yeah, I think it's a lose-lose for Hopkins in a way, because if he does school him, everybody's just going to say Kovalev yeah. was all hype in a way, which I don't see it like that. I no, think this is one of the biggest fights out there. You know, he's, um, Kovalev, if he, he's got that sort of style, he would have been at home in the Matthew Saad, Mohamed, Yaki, Lopez era, Victor Galindez. He'd have, been, he'd, have been, he'd have been a player in all those, in those eras, because he hit so hard, you know, and he, you know, he comes to fight, so... You know, this is a good fight. This is a really, really good fight. Can't wait. Right, neither can I. Right, so we move on to Eubank Jr. No Show. <laughs> <laughs> um, really unhappy about it. You know, I'm a, I love I love boxing and I love people that endorse and promote the game. And he had an opportunity to promote the game. You know, and 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 make the man in the street be aware that this is a grudge fight that these guys don't like one another so it just makes the man in the street want to buy it be interested in it just have some involvement in it and he owes it to boxing because we're without boxing we don't know about his dad and we don't know about him so he needs to you know they need to flip in well remember that next time i'm really up upset because i really think he can fight i think this is a difficult fight for billy joe mm -hmm. like if i was a betting man i'm going to go billy joe but I'm really unhappy about the no show. Really, am happy. Who do you put it? Who do you put the blame on? You know, like I've, I've, you got split for well, opinion. You think Eubank Senior is a, he knows what he's doing. He's a yeah, master class. I, no, I don't think he knows. What he's no, doing. neither do I. I think he's half crazy. In, yeah, in I opinion. don't think. He, I think what he's doing is reliving his career for his son. I think he's got an ego as big as his, as big as the house, um, and he's just got to let his son find his way you can guide him but this is really bad advice this is, you know you don't in this game of boxing with the, with, the, with the politics of boxing you don't really want to box yourself in the corner whereby if you lose a fight you might be on the outside looking in for a long time well because frank's not going to help him eddie nah, might not, not going to help him no they're not, not going to help him not they might have done but i mean they probably will do that i mean but having said that I'm, we're talking about how the man in the street would think boxing's a whole different business i'm pretty much sure that he signed an option for at least one defence should he win it or an option for a return with Billy Joe should he win. So Frank will do business with him again. Yeah, yeah. well, well, well it'll meet the demand, Frank. That's yeah, the that's the thing. Frank. No. So, right, if I'm going to put it on you, Eubank Jr. versus Billy Joe Saunders, I'll let you go first. Who do you think is going to win? If I had to put money on it, yeah. with the grade of his opponent, and he's great his amateur career every day of the week, Billy Joe Saunders. If he comes in with emotion, Ari wanting to prove a point violently and hang around and have a fight, he's picked the wrong guy to have a fight with early because I've seen this kid and he's strong as hell and he's given some guys that I've never believed he would have given trouble in the gym quite a bit of trouble. Yeah, and Cole Yeah. So... That's He's got no chance if Billy makes it a boxing contest. I just don't think he'll solve the puzzle. Um, but if Billy comes in there looking to true, prove a point to his fans, then he might come unstopped. But I just can't see Jimmy Tim's letting him do that. Well, do you know my take on that? I see Eubank Jr. stopping Billy Joe. Wow. I'm going to put it out. You know what? I don't. I think I don't think Billy Joe's got the the power to stop him. You mm. know, oh, that's no, my no, opinion. No, I don't think he can stop him. Don't get me wrong. I didn't say that. No, 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 I no. no I can outpoint him. Yeah, I I don't think he I don't think he's got the um the power to stop him getting inside. Not marching on, yeah. Yeah, I I believe that. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah, Billy and Joe. Mm. Well, you know, he has had, a, he had like one Jared, Jared Fletcher knockout, which he, he can punch a bit, Billy Joe. Yeah. But 
you know, I don't think I don't think he's got the power to stop you, Ben. Yeah. But I, I just don't think he's got the power to. I think he might Maybe confuse. Respect. Yeah, I, I think well, he's just. Will be right. Um, I just. Yeah, it's just some some fighters very rarely. Some fighters, I always say, fighters. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna be a boxer, you better be a really good boxer. Yeah. If you if you if all you can do is box and not really hurt people, then you'd be a really good boxer. And this kid is one of the best boxers I've ever seen. See, do you know what? Do you know why I like Eubank Junior after mm. this? I've, I've watched his career, right? Basically, yeah. he's, he's showing that killer instinct mean streak now, yeah? Yeah. He's putting the pedal down. Yeah. And his boxing's got better. But yeah. through some of his early fights on Channel 5, when he yeah. was a bit lackluster, yeah. when he actually got nailed with a punch by the opponent, the first thing he would do was fight back. Yeah. Right, so that shows me he's got that, that I want to get you back mentality. But having said that, who are these guys that he's getting nailed by? Look at their records. I had a look at his records, the opponents, the other day. It was not really impressive. These are guys that if they do hit you, you if you don't hit them back straight away, you're crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, yeah? I see so the This thing. is a big, big step up. Of course, yeah, it is. Yeah? It this is. is a big, big step up. And I say to Georgie Keane, if you get hit, I don't expect you to react immediately. I expect you to get even at some point, but I don't expect you to react immediately. Because more often than not, if you, if, you, if, a, if an opponent is used to you reacting instantly, he'll have something for you later on in the fight. Yeah, he'll get you back. He'll, he'll get that. you back. Because he yeah. knows you're going to, as soon as he hits you, he's going, you're going to react. Of course. And if this game ain't, this is what I'm saying, it comes back to this fight is nothing. If, if Billy, this fight, the fight game, you're a martial artist. You cannot afford to have emotion. If Billy comes in there with emotion, then he's going to give the advantage to Eubank because once one thing I do know of Eubank is that once he gets on a roll and starts hitting you, it's like a drum roll. He will not be stopped. Cool. That's... Billy has to make himself avoidable. He has to make himself not eat it over the early rounds. And um, but what I'm saying is that this is a, such a massive step up for Eubank because he's been matched very carefully. He didn't have any of the amateur grade that Billy Joe had. But don't you think, I, I understand that, but you not think the James DeGale and Frock sparring and other sparring that he's had will make him more than ready for that? No. I, see, I see some no. clips of that. No. No? I had a, I had a pleasure of having a dinner with um, Sugar Leonard uh, last year, and he said, all sparring does is get you in condition to fight. A fight night is totally different. Right, okay. Yeah? All sparring does is get you into condition for the fight. Yeah, and on the night. And what it does, it gives you confidence. Don't get me wrong. It gives you confidence. The better you spar, the more confident you get. That's good. But you're not going to have the same mindset come fight night. Very few fighters have the same sparring mindset that they have in sparring that they do in a real fight. Because all of a sudden, there's not just 10 or 15 people watching you in the gym. There's... 10 or 15,000 as there will be at the XL. Of course, yeah, it's a whole yeah. different ball game for him. Stage fright. Billy Joe's done it before. He's boxed at the XL in difficult fights. I believe he's a better fighter now than when he boxed Nick Blackwell. Um, Ryder. Sorry? When he fought Ryder as well. Yeah, Ryder. Game. He's a better fighter than that now. You know, as a, as a, as a stoppage of Blandon Moore's shoulders. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect him to stop Blandon Moore so quick. And I just think this is a massive step up. I think that fighting, sometimes fighting's about timing. And I think they've got their timing wrong on this on the Eubank camp. He's right. not proved himself against any of the top 10 middleweights in the country. Yep. And all of a sudden he's in there fighting for the British, European and Commonwealth titles. It just doesn't add up. But because they made such, because they promoted this fight so well and there's so much disrespect between the two of them, we're getting what we want. We're getting two fighters, one with a name because of his dad, selling a grudge. Yeah, well, that's... Nothing the better, is there? No, I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> Me or you, wait. Gary, are going to... I can't wait. I've let's let's not gonna... forget that there's also a great heavyweight fight, a potentially great heavyweight fight. I know that Derek's not going to take a backwards step against Tyson. And I really think he's going to ask questions of Tyson Fury. So who do you think... Yeah, so who do you think... I've, I've got Derek winning that one. Wow. Yeah, I got Is that Derek. because you want him to win, or you think that 
What do you think that he does well? Let me put the question to you. What do you think he, he does well that will negate what Tyson does well? Right, well, Tyson Fury, let me start. He's, he's, he's really grown into a man, even more so from the yeah. last time. You know, and I think he's going to come strong behind the jab in the orthodox style this time yeah. with Derek. He ain't going to mess about going southpaw. He's going yeah, to come strong. Right, yeah. He's going to look to... He's in the shape of his life. I see that. But yeah, what, yeah, I think, definitely. what I think Derek's going to do well this time is, I think Derek's going to... Derek's going to be in better shape than he was against Vitaly Klitschko. Mm -hmm. And and he's gonna he's gonna be able to head movement in with Tyson Fury, and he's gonna and he's gonna hit him with them big overhand racks, mm. clubbing, and he's gonna look to bundle him against a rope, mm -hmm. and 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 outwork him and out hustle him. Tyson Fury will fight back and will maybe hit Derek hard, but I think mm. Derek on the inside has got some good defence. As long mm. as he's not, I I think when he fought David Hay, he was lunging. He was like he yeah. was clawing in the air and stuff. I, yeah, that yeah. was so out of character. If they, but David, they, yeah, but David was a different animal for him to fight. You know, you know, he wasn't used to a heavyweight with sharp feet who, who could make him miss and make him pay. Um, Fury just relies on on his reach, on his big frame. Yeah. So you know, he's not got great head movement, and he will be there to be hit. So, and I don't know if he's got the actual power to take. No, 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 sure, we haven't you know. seen it, have we, against any world-class heavyweights? We've Don't not get seen me wrong, it. if he but hits... But this is, this is the, you know, there's a lot of questions for Fury to answer. Um, I'm going to go simply because of what Derek's done. Derek's, Derek's, Derek's body of work over the last two years, even with David, even with Klitschko, I'm going to go Derek, I'm, I'm going to go Derek to prove an upset, to, to, to course score an upset. Yeah, I'm gonna. If, but if Tyson wins, he's the truth. That's the way. Yeah, I'm that's gonna right. Look at. If yeah. he wins convincingly, he is the truth. There's no, yeah. you know, there's too many questions still. But if he he can answer all the questions in the manner of his victory. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go with that one as yeah. well. Right, just one last thing. Chavez signing with uh, Al Heyman. You think that's a good thing, a bad thing, or a mad thing? God, dear, what can you say? I mean, so many people with Al Heyman, so many good fighters, and. As a result of it, we've had some good fights out of our Heyman fighters, you know? So, we've had fights that have not happened. Um, I th you know what? I don't profess to know enough about Al Heyman. All I know is that he's a big player right now. Um, we'll only, only, we will only know in the coming months when Chavez Jr. announces his next opponent. I'm praying that it's Carl Froch. Um, if not, then, you know, we'll either see Carl against the girl or we'll see Carl knock it on the head. I'd love it to be against Carl, because I think that'd be a great fight. Well, but see, yeah, I, I do see that, but I think that, like, personally myself, I think Chavez Jr. is a, a very overrated fighter. Mm, yeah. that, that has actually had a promoter in Bob Aaron that has made him a fortune, made him yeah. a megastar. And, and, and he's and he's cherry, had hand picked cherry picked opponents along yeah. the way, up until he actually put him in there with a real live opponent and Martin, Martin and he yeah. lost. But you know what? He's like he's like the Benny he's like the Benny Del Toro of boxing, isn't he? He's like Benicio Del Toro. He's like one of those. He he looks like Benicio Del Toro. When I watch him act, it's like he'd rather not even be on the screen. And Chavez Junior has that air where you think I can't be asked to do this. I really can't, but it just so happens I'm not bad at it. He's not special, but he is special tough. <laughs> well, yes, he's got, he he's got the genes, isn't he? He is special tough, which always makes for an interesting style because he is quite an in-your-face sort of Mexican fighter, and that's why he's so popular. I mean, gosh, you know, so many Mexicans can't be wrong about this guy. He really is popular amongst them, you know? Of course. Oh, yeah, one... It, that is what it is, you know, is this mixed reaction. Yeah, uh, you know, he's not he's not technically adept. He's not brilliant at any one thing. He's a good good enough inside fighter. He's a tough guy. He always comes to fight come fight time. Um, stylistically, in Cole Froch and Triple G type fights, he'll always be in a good fight. Yeah, yeah. always, always. He'll go on his shield. He'll go on his shield. So, of course, know, right. Be. Just one last thing, Gary. When, when are we going to see you next on Box Nation? Box Nation, I'll be doing the Crawford versus Beltran fight. I think that's in two weeks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll be doing that. I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, we're going to really see whether Gamboa was too small for Crawford, which made Crawford look like 
the next coming of Tommy Hearns, or if he does a number on Beltran, then we can really say he is the next coming of Tommy Hearns. You know, so it'd be, it'd, who, who you got winning that one? Weight, massive at the weight. Who you got? Oh, I've got I've got um, Crawford all day. Of course, I've got Crawford all day. I think Bertrand had his opportunity when he knew that um, Ricky Burns had a busted jaw and he never took advantage of it. You know, I still thought he won the fight, but sparring, that was sparring. a time to step on his neck. You know, a guy's got a busted jaw. Why are you not keep hitting it? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I think he's. I mean, Crawford is a really, really exciting fight. Very, very talented. Getting better all the time. When he beat, when he first bet Prescott, I thought, oh yeah. Nice little touch boxer, you know. Um, we've got um, okay at everything, not special at any one thing. But um, he proved that if you swap shots with him, you, you, you might be in trouble, you know. Having said that, Gamboa has gone over easily. So this the fight against a solid, good, lightweight man that has Beltran was going to really answer some questions for us as to how really good he is. Right, well, well excited. And I can't wait yeah. to see and hear your... Anal- analytical statements after because yeah. I always is, agree is, is with you. Is it Nebraska again? Is it? Yeah, I think so. It's on his own state. Yeah, we're going to have to get a yeah. arena because the last one when he boxed Gamboa was amazing. You know, he'll be selling out stadiums out in that place soon. They ain't got nothing else out in Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> See, uh, well, that's that's where the Walking Dead is set, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, let, let, let me... Um, I interview... Uh, at the end of my interviews, I ask one question. Yeah. yeah? Well, and it turns into a two-word answer. Basically, Mayweather-Pacquiao, if they fight next year in May, in May who wins? Mayweather. If they, <laughs> and if, they, if they fought back in their primes? Pacquiao. Pacquiao, yeah? Yeah. Right, that's, yeah. there we hear Gary Logan's prediction on the, the biggest fight that never took place. Yeah. And uh, this, thank you for having us... Uh, thank you for being with us today, Gary. Absolutely, really, mate. No problem. UK boxing blogger out.